The group of nobodies known as Organization 13 believe they are empty husks of their former selves. Therefore, any emotion they feel is a mere reflection of what they once were. However, there was one in their ranks that was convinced he had a heart, that he could have the same human feelings as any other person, and that he wasn't restricted by the limitations that comes with being a nobody. Of course, this certain character is none other than Roxas, number 13 and the nobody of Sora. While he is considered a secondary protagonist of Kingdom Hearts 2, being on the cover of the game, as well as featured on almost every piece of merchandise, he doesn't carry the same amount of importance as Sora, Riku, and Kairi. Aside from being referenced here and there, he appears in only two sections of the game, that being the intro and the ending. He almost seems to serve as a bookend of sorts, considering that his arc begins in the first world the game opens with, and you never see the conclusion until you reach the last. Now, there have been dozens upon dozens of video essays on the internet that talk about the necessity of the Roxas introduction, and how despite its padded length, it manages to set him up as a sympathetic character. However, I don't see too many people breaking down the latter half of his story, and how his final fight with Sora ultimately represents how he came to peace with who he is and accepted his role as a nobody. So, that's what I'm here to do today, for what I describe as the most groundbreaking scene in Kingdom Hearts 2, where Sora and Roxas finally meet face to face. So, to summarize Roxas' story in a nutshell, no pun intended, he's a nobody that left the organization as soon as he speculated something was up with their true intentions. Riku captures him, and Diz takes him to the virtual Twilight Town, which is where Kingdom Hearts 2 begins. There, he spends time with Hainer, Pence, and Olette, and befriends them. But his normal life is ruined by the revelation that this Twilight Town is nothing more than a projection of the real one, and that his true purpose was to rejoin with Sora in order to awaken him from the deep sleep he was placed in at the end of Chain of Memories. With his final words being, Looks like my summer vacation is over. He tragically gives up what he really wants in exchange for the greater good of restoring Sora's memories to defeat the organization. It would have looked at that point Roxas' side of the story was finished, for most of the middle portion shifts to focusing on Sora. However, if that were the case, it would have felt rather inconclusive, for Roxas doesn't feel satisfied as he remerges with Sora. In fact, the previous scene really shows how reluctant he is to do this, with him slash get Diz and insisting that he's his own personal being. He cannot help but feel pain and anguish that he doesn't get to enjoy the same rights that a regular human has, for what is he but an empty shell of another person? As Diz states, A nobody doesn't have a right to know, nor does it even have the right to be. Sure, Roxas gets mentioned from time to time, but that doesn't really amount to having much of a presence. Ultimately, his character arc would have been nothing except an ordinary Joe being forced to give up his desires because of the restraints placed on him by his nature as a nobody, and I cannot think of a story that feels so empty and hollow, a tragedy with no catharsis. But, thankfully, Nomura didn't leave it at that, for everything changes after Sora makes those first few steps into the world that never was. Donald! Goofy! Huh? A keyblade? At this point, Roxas awakens from his dormant state to challenge Sora for his personhood. While previously, he never made any signs of life except for subtle moments, it was Axel's death that shook Roxas to the core. According to Xemnas, Axel touched Sora's heart after he died, which roused up the nobody within him. It's not really shown how Roxas feels inside of Sora, but in the manga, 
He's curled up in a ball as if he's sitting inside a constricted space. From the angry glare he gives, he's ready to break out of the prison he was forced into against his will, wielding Oathkeeper and Oblivion and using his samurai nobodies to hold off Donald and Goofy. Roxas transports Sora to the Station of Awakening for a first and final clash to decide who gets to carry out the vengeance against Organization 13. Now on the surface, this fight might seem random, especially considering how Roxas comes out of a dark portal suddenly and attacks Sora, but if the context is considered, it makes more sense. As Xemnas had noted, Axel had just died, and he was the only real connection Roxas had left. Hainer, Pence, and Olette were not real. Shion had rejoined with the rest of Sora's memories, and now, Axel had passed. Axel states that Sora made him feel like he had a heart in the same manner that Roxas did, and Roxas himself felt the same for Axel. So, to lose the only one left that makes him feel like a person enraged Roxas so much, he attacks the one who took away the very thing he holds the dearest in an attempt to regain it. In this case, Sora had taken away his opportunity to have his own identity, and all of his other connections being severed from life circumstances, he wasn't about to let his own individualism slip from his grasp. And the boss fight itself takes a lot of liberty to articulate Roxas' desperation. His attire consists of the Organization 13 black coat, with the hood pulled up while wielding Oathkeeper and Oblivion. While this is the usual clothing of the Organization members, Roxas notably only dons the cloak this way in specific moments of grief. In 358 over two days, he pulled his hood over his face after he watched Xion perish to reform with Sora's memories. In a similar manner, Axel's death triggers the same form of mourning and depression. However, the Oathkeeper and Oblivion symbolizes the rage and anger that comes with that sadness, as seen how in days he uses them to overpower Riku while attempting to escape the organization, and in Kingdom Hearts 2, he's clearly more powerful when using them, as seen with how he's able to outmatch Axel in their respective fight, and in his fight with Sora, he always seems to have the upper hand despite Sora's best efforts. I do believe that Square Enix intentionally made this final mix exclusive boss fight more difficult compared to all the other battles in order to describe the inner turmoil Roxas endured. Every swing he makes is channeled with his cries of rage. He lunges at Sora in a spiraling dash, he'll charge up his dual keyblades to perform a circular wave that can kill Sora instantly if he's not careful. Even when he loses his keyblades to the reaction command in the middle of the fight, he still fights on as if he has nothing to lose. In fact, arguably, he becomes even more dangerous with his unblockable laser moves that can easily kill Sora. Furthermore, one of his desperation moves involves him hurling his Keyblades towards Sora in rapid succession, which can stunlock him and can only be mitigated with properly placed iframes or being lucky with a guard. He doesn't hold back against Sora, channeling his own hatred towards him. However, in the midst of all the animosity, the soft melody of the other promise plays in the background, almost as if to show the tragedy behind Roxas's insanity. Even after the finishing blow, the fight continues on. The two of them begin conversing. Sora immediately questions who Roxas is, to which he responds by saying he's a being of the dark, basically his way of saying he lay deep within Sora's subconsciousness. After having a brief conversation on the topic of Riku, Roxas changes the subject, and remarks, tell me why he chose you, before charging at Sora and slashing at him several times. In the manga, he phrases the question slightly differently, by asking, tell me why it had to be you. Roxas is frustrated that his destiny was to be nothing more than a tool to complete Sora. Though he was taught that nobodies were shells of their former selves, he can't comprehend why he couldn't enjoy the same recognition of being a person Sora was able to. Instead, as a nobody, he'd found nothing but persecution for pursuing answers to his questions. Floating in the air, he sees all the connections of Sora, including Riku, Kairi, 
Donald and Goofy, and claims, I see, that's why. Almost as if he's either realizing that the strength of Sora's relationships is what makes him worthy of wielding the Keyblade, or he's marveling at the power of Sora's connections, whereas he's had so few. This realization makes him even more resentful towards Sora, and he fights harder. So much so that Sora falls on the back foot and crumples to the ground, Roxas knocking away his Keyblade and pinning it down with his Oath Keeper. It seems as if he was the victor. He had cheated destiny by defeating Sora. Perhaps in his triumph, he had proven he was the one more worthy to defeat Xemnas and destroy the rest of the organization. But then Sora reaches out one last time, and the Keyblade reappears in his hands to Roxas' surprise. Sora slashes the air while Roxas' Oath Keeper and Oblivion fade away. The memory of his birth flashes across the screen before the scene shifts to Axel and Roxas eating sea salt ice cream on a Twilight Town clock tower. They have the same conversation that 358 over two days opens with, in which Axel asks if he and Roxas have a heart. After all, how could they have such strong emotions if they didn't have one? However, while he still admits to not knowing, this time Roxas is more at peace, believing that Sora will find a way. For once in his life, Roxas can finally rest. After all the questions he's had, and fleeing from the people who wanted to use him, he has at last found a safe place in Sora, having seen the true purity of his heart. As a side note, this conversation also foreshadows the big twist in Dream Drop Distance, where it's revealed that the organization members really did have hearts despite their status as nobodies. So, it kind of goes to show that Nomura didn't completely pull it out of his ass, and there was in fact some form of a hint towards this plot development. I know it's not a popular opinion to think that Nomura planned out the entire Kingdom Hearts storyline, but I think scenes like this one do exemplify there was at least some planning involved. With that, the scene returns to the Station of Awakening. Roxas' hood falls off to reveal his face, and he turns to Sora and says, You make a good other. The manga provides more context, for when Sora was unarmed by Roxas, all he could think about was the promise he had made to Riku he'd take care of Kairi. The thought of rescuing her empowered him so much that it was enough to summon the Keyblade back into his hand, declaring he couldn't lose here. With that, Roxas gives his approval to Sora by saying, exactly what my other half would say. Now, I can leave the rest to you, signaling that he accepted Sora as his somebody, based on his performance in the fight, as well as the determination he displayed. For the first time, Roxas saw why his fate, though difficult, was all for the best, considering that Sora was not only strong enough to carry out the vengeance against Xemnas and the organization better than he ever could, but also that Sora was worthy enough considering that he had proven he truly was the Keyblade's chosen one. After so many years of fighting to be his own self, Roxas finally concedes in peace. While it doesn't quite change the plot of Kingdom Hearts too much, it's still a scene that resonates with me. Growing up, I definitely knew how Roxas felt. Without going into too much details, I found myself feeling like an outsider and not having too many friends, so there were many times where I desired to have more control over my life. In a similar way, because Roxas is a nobody who believes he has a heart, he desires to have the privilege of being an ordinary human apart from the rest of the organization. Sadly, fate had other plans, and he was forced to give up that goal. Despite re-merging with Sora early on in the game, he never fully came to terms with it until he faces off against him and finally saw why this had to be the case. Hence, the two become one Keyblade is supposed to represent a closure he feels about being with Sora. Ultimately, Roxas' story demonstrates sometimes we don't have control of the direction of our lives. Some of us are more fortunate and end up where we want, but for the rest of us that are unlucky, are we going to respond with anger and resentment, or choose to live and accept it? As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.